This is Travis Cowsill, co-founder and creative director for Hero Hair, the real wig experience, with a look at the complete corrective remastering our studio performed on a pre-existing stock wig, transforming it into a Hero Hair quality principal actor wig for its on-screen performance worn by Jane Krakowski in the production of Schmigadoon. You're looking at our completed work of the finished wig in our studio, uh, shortly before shipping it to Canada for the production. And we'll let this coverage run for a, a few minutes while we unpack the details of what a corrective remastering is versus something a producer or a department head viewing this would be typically familiar with, which would be the more common concept of a basic refronting of an existing piece for a production by a wig house. So let's set the scene and get into it. Uh, Hero Hair is a completely custom studio providing fully built wigs and facial hair for film and television production, uh, thoroughly researched, designed for the specific actor and look, and meticulously constructed from the ground up for every principal role where wigs are required. Uh, most in the industry would agree that it's the ideal for their principal cast to have the time and often budget uh, with which to provide that service, a fully realized, fully built custom piece uh, to the actor on the call sheet. That said, that really doesn't always present itself in the business. Uh, the refronting of a piece, uh, for the rest of the demonstration, we'll focus on wigs, uh, is of course common and often necessary for repairs to any damage after the end of filming, or if there are sequels or additional seasons to contend with where the piece would likely be reused, uh, reshoots, uh, all of that. Uh, when the wig is seen, a lot of action, you know, the list goes on. Uh, even the sturdiest custom piece, uh, once through production, will show its wear by wrap, although our pieces are designed to fare better than most in that regard. The truth is that there are a host of circumstances uh, and rationales for a wig to be refronted. Instances of time or budget constraints, however, refronting a wig, and we'll get into, again, the difference between refronting and remastering in a minute, it's generally done as a means to an end, you know, which is get a good wig on the actor that will work. Uh, it must fall in line with the show design or look uh, when you're greenlit for filming. I mean, oftentimes an actor is cast right before these things need to be done. Um, and it's, and it's in these instances of, of constraint where refronting is, is done in order to repurpose a pre-existing piece for an actor it wasn't originally designed for. Um, it is often, unfortunately, one of the challenges we face as artists to make it look as though uh, it actually was designed for that actor. Uh, and we're tasked with making you know, a literal seamless illusion for the camera. Uh, on another individual's work that, that brings with it a wide array of you know, considerations and requirements of skill to accomplish successfully. Used almost universally to stretch the dollar on the screen when it's not a matter of time and, and, and you know, first day of filming creeping up. Frankensteining, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, a wig can often, unfortunately, you know, lead to a monster if it's not done expertly. And um, it is here that hero hair is usually called upon to take up the job. Uh, so let's get on with this. Uh, let's show you the work we did. Hero Hair provided all the custom wigs, hairpiece applications, and facial hair applications for season two of Dickinson, starring Haley Steinfeld. It should be noted that uh, for posterity, Haley's hair was done by Josh Kierke. So she never wore a Hero Hair piece for that production, but Jane Krakowski certainly did, and has a lot of experience in our work from that show. Also a lot of experience working with our founder, Aaron Kennedy Lunsford, who was also a key for season two and season one. So she had experience with Jane, Jane knew us. So, you know, when we got the call from Canada's production to uh, lend a little assist in repurposing a stock wig that they had for Jane, we were only too happy to help. And as we leave Hero Hair lead artist Madison Fry ventilating the refronted full nape reveal for Jane's wig, this is where we should talk about the difference between a standard industry refronting of a pre-existing piece, a rental uh, stock from a department head such as this, and what Hero Hair does that goes significantly beyond that standard with what our studio has pioneered, known as corrective remastering. 
When we received this stock wig from Canada, from Schmigadoon department head hair, Julie McAfee, uh, understanding that we would already be applying what Hero Hair is probably most known for, our studio's exclusive Hero hairline, as well as hair directional growth pattern plotting. Regardless of Hero Hair replacing the entire hairline perimeter with a hyper-accurate replication of Jane's naturally existing detail. Looking at the pre-existing wig, we can already see that the original approach to this hairline would not be one followed by Hero Hair. In fact, it features one of two common issues, in our opinion, with film and television wig hairline standards seen in the industry today. That being a generalized perimeter border, serving merely to approximate that of the original actors, providing only the basic coverage necessary to mask the prep and natural hairline perimeter, although while leaving excessive negative space and insufficient density into the crown. One could call this overly gradated or overly sparse. For reference to the discussion conversely, were we to look at one of the other main issues with film and television pieces seen widely in the industry, that being an overly dense, hard-fronted hairline with no true-to-life sparseness or gradation, we would see neither of these are ever successful in a believable illusion for the camera or the audience. Seen here in a clip from our studio demo reel located on the homepage of our website, we demonstrate with dramatic effect the difference between an overly dense hairline seen in many film and television productions versus the hero hairline, the faithfully reproduced, hyper-accurate hairline of the original actor, subject, or source reference. Naturally gradated, correct visual and structural density into the scalp, and believable under extreme close-up shooting conditions and the most scrutinizing HD camera lenses and cinematography. In this second example of the same issue, a real-world ventilated demonstration of a similarly dense, oversimplified hairline lacking in real human gradation, nuance, or detail versus a hero hairline created to be absolutely real under extreme close-up conditions and immediately recognizable not only as human, thus avoiding the uncanny valley, but as that of the original reference or actor in this case, our screen accurate reproduction of Judy Garland. Both hairline issues we've demonstrated, common in wigs seen in motion pictures and television today, serve to pull the audience out of the desired illusion on screen and into the uncanny valley. Jane's natural hairline, which would be replicated from a full set of 360 degree continuity control turnaround images, taken from our personally conducted head wrap session, would be stenciled at the finite level for following by our lead artist during ventilation in concert with our hair directional growth pattern plotting for the remastering of this wig. Again, for reference, using one of our feature film level privately commissioned screen accurate custom reproduction wigs, in this case, that of Alden Ehrenreich, hair directional growth pattern plotting is a process whereby Rather than a typical hair ventilation directed generally along the Diné, the rudimentary perimeter hairline tracing produced from the client's head wrap is instead translated beyond the norms of a traditional pad out to a highly detailed, expressly plotted blueprint across the entirety of the head. Blueprinted in concert with the Hero hairline, this process can be exceptionally detailed depending on the needs of the design or the character. For Jane's remastering, we kept those details primarily where they would be seen, necessary for full reveals, and incorporated into the pre-existing wig's remaining areas in a seamless, imperceptible join. Jane's naturally existing hairline was accurately reproduced, while the hair muscle memory provided by the growth pattern plotting would hardwire the illusion of life beneath the final set, still allowing for full HMU styling capability, and allowing for a completely natural, hyper-accurate reveal, forehead, temples to nape. In addition to our complete construction, direction, and detail perimeter remastering of the pre-existing wig, Hero Hair additionally provided a full visual and structural assessment of the total state of the wig, including conducting a complete color study, 
under our exclusive True Hue Physical Color Grading. Against the design concept inspiration reference imagery we were given, which were a series of classic photos of Eleanor Parker from The Sound of Music. Looking at similar reference presented here, one can surmise the difficulty of reverse engineering often heavily filtered, tonally inconsistent images available online into what would have been the actual tones that were originally photographed by the camera for the production. Uh, studying the film itself was also necessary to get a complete picture of what color would, again, likely be incorporated for Jane's final look. Our final assessment, once the true color was revealed in that reference, was that the pre-existing stock wig also needed to be elevated with a full color correction. In addition to our remastering of the full forehead to nape reveal with the hero hairline. Let's listen in. Understanding where we've gone and where we're going to. So you pulled all the smudge rooting out that was in the wig when it came in. So we gave it a bleach wash, which pulled out the purple shampoo and the original rooting that had been done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that took it almost to its original, what I imagine was its original state, but right. it had some, sh like still had some champagne pink through it. Right. And that's what we're dealing with right now. So Correct? And then what we did, yeah. So then what we did was which is what I think we'll need to go in and which will remove that pinky champagne that we're still seeing because, yeah, which is right because the, it's throughout. And the reason is yeah. yes. we wanted a highlight. So what we did was we left that out and then we toned the rest of it. So there was a low and a high, but what, so what we need to do then is go and take all those highs and put a toner over that and that'll pull the pink out. So it's an act, we actually have to go in and highlight it. Now. That makes a lot of sense. And, and this is because, now this is because that pink was from what exactly? It was from the previous treatment of the wig, right? Yeah, I think that it wasn't the, I don't think the purple shampoo stained it, but yeah. whatever color it was before, yeah. um, that pink, yeah, because you can see in here this beautiful yellow that we want, right? Right. And then this is still like beige. Yeah. So we need to go in and highlight it. And that's easy. And, and then it be great. should match our hair up It should here, be a very close relatively match. close, yeah. Because we've got those yellows under here, but they're still mixed in with the beige. Yeah. So we gotta get rid of the beige. We need more of these yellows to carry back through here also. Uh, is that gonna be a possibility? We are going to, because the top is looking great. Um, but we like this where it would have been a highlight. We need to now tone tone it so it picks yeah. up into the yellow spec yep. into the into the uppers into the golds. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Tuesday we'll finish that up. But I'm glad we started it yesterday because I knew it was going to be a process. Yeah. Good job, guys. I love how we always have like different ideas and then they always work out <laughs> together. Yeah. Together. The dimension looks really good on camera. Yeah, it looks really good. The newly rebuilt wig was finally stripped of all remaining original values to a pure platinum yellow blonde base tone and readied for full finishing work by our studio for delivery to the production. This final work would include recalibrating the temperatures of a newly formulated custom blonde dye against the stripped wig to remaster evenly into the values of the altered tones, complete retoning of the entire piece, and hand rooting low light and highlight application throughout the crown to temples and full nape reveal. Final hero hairline ventilation detail was completed and a finishing shadow root was applied to the entire hairline reveal perimeter. All details present in Jane's natural hairline, from direction of cowlicks to negative space between hairs at the single follicle level would be replicated for extreme close-up, high-definition photography. Combined with our studio's HD film lace, our entirely unique results virtually eliminate the need for budget-costly VFX or beauty budgeting, or the standard hairline Gaussian blurring in post. Demonstrating again with our fully cut and styled screen accurate reproduction of Judy Garland, Jane's newly remastered wig, while delivered to the production in its industry standard raw, uncut, unstyled build state, is shipped the very same way. In our studio's exclusive custom transportation and storage case, stabilized atop the build block, 
and draped with a sturdy protective shroud for its journey to HMU, where it was expertly cut and styled for its episode debut by Schmigadoon department head hair, Julie McAfee. Rather than a simple refronting, the production received, for all intents and purposes, a completely new, fully redesigned custom wig shining like movie star gold, thanks to Hero Hair and our signature process offered by no other wig house on earth. Can't even press the button, I'm so tired. And so, another amazing adventure at the hallowed halls of production. Oh, that's my favorite kind of tea. There he goes. If you want to catch Bigfoot, simply offer him tea. He'll come running or slowly lumbering, but looking beautiful nonetheless. Clearly, a job well done. It's made with unicorn hair. Down to the dent.